Dumb. That's the right adjective to use when talking about former Austrian cyclist Stefan Denifel, a cycling nobody who suddenly, overnight, went on to become one of the best climbers in the peloton in his infamous 2017 campaign. As he was neither a known nor credible performance cyclist, he was one of the scapegoats of Operation Adderlass, the Austrian-German combo that has come to investigate cyclists like Primus Roglic and Tom de Milan. And he has even been sentenced to two years in prison. Do you want to know his story? Well, without further ado, let the show begin. Stefan Denifel was at the beginning of 2017, just another rider on the scene, a guy who had only two victories in minor races already 10 years ago, and who had a nickname in the peloton. He was known as the climber incapable of scoring victories. For many seasons, he was enrolled in teams like Carlos Sastre's Cervelo or Jarlinson Pantano's Swiss I Am Cycling, where in four years, the only relevant thing in his palmares were the fights that he made for the mountain classifications. But in that year of 2017, something changed. I Am Cycling disappeared and its cyclists had to find another means to put bread on the table. Denifel found such a loaf of bread in Aqua Blue Sport. A newly created Irish team that from the start generated suspicion in the cycling universe. These guys, dressed in dark blue, amongst whom was our Austrian friend, began by making a big deal out of the use of single chain rings on their bikes and proceeded to obtain victories in various competitions with riders who had never stood out in previous seasons. But without any doubt, the most suspicious thing about this new team is that in their first pro campaign, they were invited to no less than the Vuelta a España. So we can imagine that the bargaining chips that they had at their disposal were impressive to say the least. And they also assured the Vuelta director, Javier Guillén, who you can see in these archive images freaking out like Flippy himself that they were going to put on a good show in the race. Stefan Denifel, meanwhile, was starting to enjoy unique results that he hadn't had in 10 years as a pro. After giving a very good impression of himself in the Tour of Oman, surrounded by world tour teams, he got his first big professional victory, no more and no less than in the Tour of Austria, ahead of well-known riders such as Superman Lopez, Ben O'Connor, or Giulio Ciccone. He was the local man, and well, we could believe that he was particularly motivated to get the final victory in that stage race, that for others was maybe nothing more than a simple training. But we were wrong. That tour of Austria only made the monster begin to grow behind the scenes of Central European medicine. After such a triumph, he was obviously chosen for the 8 of Aqua Blue for the Tour of Spain and his directors promised Guillen the team was going to give a right show, and the chosen one was to be our Austrian friend. In a stage finishing in Los Machuchos, a Cantabrian pass that is little more than an elongated goat slope, Denifel was going to storm the Bastille, with a performance that could have been signed off by Peter Ugrimov himself in the last week of the 1994 Tour de France. Perhaps ultra-motivated, because an arsonist had burnt his team bus days earlier, Denifel decided to go on the attack that day. Our Stefan was more on fire than Michelle Pfeiffer in Scarface, and although he had escaped with men of the quality of Julian Alaphilippe, Magnus Court Nielsen, and the flying Danny Moreno, the Aqua Blue Rider that day felt unique in his kind, and was undeniably unbeatable on the climbs. In fact, on the Alisas Pass, he finished ahead of Sigarin Moreno, who had that day marked in his calendar with a big X. The Spaniard Moreno himself decided to attack at the base of Las Machucas, but on the arrival to the hardest ramps of the Callado de la Espina, a real wall of 20% slope, the unknown to the general public, Denifel passed over his breakaway companions and headed straight for the sky straight to the triumph, although there was still a tough hurdle to overcome. Denifel had reached the top with only 1 minute and 25 seconds over the group of favourites, and behind him a very hot Alberto Contador 
who had not yet won a stage in La Vuelta, where he was allowed to do all kinds of exhibitions, as it was his last professional competition. Attacked in such a way that he left the leader, Chris Froome, swinging off the back. It seemed that the Spanish champion was going to easily catch the Austrian with hardly any victories in his palmares, but it was not so. The little man from Aqua Blue that day looked like Marco Pantani himself and climbed as if there was no chain on his bike, so much so that despite the fury of Contador, the Spaniard was barely able to cut time to a guy who, as he would say the finish line, could not believe what he had done on that rainy day in northern Spain. Thus, after more than three hours in the breakaway, Stefan Dinefel obtained the best victory of his professional career. No more and no less than in a grand tour and in a mountain stage and ahead of the big names of the peloton. His climb was so hair-raising that he even managed to pull out more of a lead over Britain's Froome, supported by Welt Poles, than he had started with on that 9km climb. An absolutely incredible victory. Although it was much more surprising to learn that it was his last as a professional, since after that he practically disappeared from the scene, although he was received as a hero in his home country. The reason? He had been busted for doping in a joint Austrian-German police operation, known as Operation Adderlass. After videos leaked of Austrian skiers doping with blood in their hotel rooms before racing, police investigated German doctor Mark Schmidt, already known to cycling fans as a Gerolsteiner doctor who doped Bernard Kohl and Stefan Schumacher, amongst others, in the 2008 Tour de France. Schmidt continued his doping practices and he had numerous bags of blood in his home with dates and names of various athletes, among them some professional cyclists, including our friend Stefan Denifel. Of course, there were much more important names that have not filtered out to the public, but Dr. Schmidt obviously preferred to involve a patsy such as Denifel, who had only achieved one great triumph in his life, and, moreover, this was already not very credible in itself. The police immediately arrested the former Aqua Blue Rider, who had recently retired at the age of 31, after receiving a tip-off that he was under investigation. Unlike the Spanish riders in the Operation Puerto, perhaps for cultural reasons, Denifel confessed to his doping practices. He claimed that if he had not doped with transfusions, growth hormones and EPO, he would never have obtained the contract as a professional cyclist and he had no qualms about confessing that he doped to put bread on the table and in the process get a little fame and money. Denifel lost his wins starting in 2014, namely the two that he had in his magical 2017. The investigators quantified that Denifel had earned more than half a million euro through his current account during those three years thanks to his doping practices and decided to sentence on the one hand Dr. Schmidt to five years in prison and on the other Denifel to two. Although as he is a good citizen with no previous record he is simply on probation as of today. Too bad that they did not dare to give up the big names. Maybe cycling today will be different. <laughs>